Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, I'm John, this is many a true nerd, and welcome back to Fallout New Vegas Survival Mode in the J. Sawyer mod. And today, today we're going to be doing one of my favourite little quests, actually, a very fun little quest. But we've got a few bits and pieces to do first. The first is a new mod, and like all of my favourite mods, this mod is very, very subtle indeed. In fact, uh, you probably wouldn't notice it unless I actually pointed it out, which is just how I like my mods. So, I've installed the Weapon Animation Replacer mod, link in the description below, as is usual. What that means is typically when you get out a gun in this game, and this is all kind of uh, basically third person only as far as I can tell, which is like if you go into first person, it doesn't make any difference. The weapons just stay, you know, in the bottom right as they normally do. However, if you go out into third person now, it's just some very subtle additional animations. So when you're running along with a pistol, you kind of hold it up in a higher position. Or if you've got, say, a shotgun out, then while you're running along, you kind of swing it a little bit more, which I just quite like. It's very, very subtle indeed, but I do just think it's a lovely little addition that like, you know, just feels a little bit more naturalistic. Rather than just kind of running along with your gun held out in front of you, you actually feel like you're swinging while you're running or you're kind of holding it up to balance the weight a bit better. It's just nice. I just think it's a lovely little, just a very, very tiny touch that just makes the whole thing just fit together a little bit better. And with that in play, the next thing I want to do is go and grab myself a new weapon, a very important weapon. A weapon that's kind of, well, arguably more important than a lot of people give it credit for, which is, I'm going to head down in this direction over towards Old Lady Gibson's Scrapyard Shop, or whatever it's called. I think it's just called Old Lady Gibson's Scrapyard, actually. But she is a trader, and she has some unique items. She's important for a quest we'll be doing later, but uh, more importantly than that, she's got something very, very special indeed. And I'm trying to remember exactly all the ways that you can actually get it. Now, unfortunately, Old Lady Gibson herself only sells junk. She'll sell you junk and, like, I think a tiny bit of aid as well. She will not sell you the weapon that she's actually holding, that I believe, if we just kind of look in our inventory quickly, because having a look isn't a crime. Uh, Old Lady Gibson's key. No, you can't even pickpocket it. Interesting. She's got a unique weapon on her. A very, very powerful one. And best as I can tell from doing a quick kind of rootle through her property, there's literally only one way to get your hands on it, and that is indeed kind of unfortunately murder. So as Ron Perlman would probably say, the wasteland was a harsh and unforgiving place, full of exploding old ladies. But this here, this is exactly why I brought along a couple of throwing spears, because they are ranged silent weapons, that might mean, if I'm very, very lucky, I can kill her without getting the attention of the dog right next to her. So right next to her there, line up the shot next to her head, and down old Lady Gibson goes. And the dogs did not see me do it. Perfect. I don't need to kill all of her puppies, which is the important thing. Good girl, Ray, who's a good puppy. Now... Now we can sit on the... Oh, that's nice. This is actually a unique asset. This is the Repcon O chair. That's very cool. So she's actually sitting on a unique asset there. I'll just have a sit down here. Oh, and that's something I didn't realise. The enhanced camera means you can now sit down in, uh, in first person. There's lovely. So she goes with a bit of ammo. But more importantly, she comes with the Big Boomer. This is the game's unique variant of the Sawn-Off shotgun. And it is the most powerful shotgun in the game. Like, and it's not even close. The thing is, this thing fires when it's at full condition. Let's actually uh, get this thing up here for a second. Yeah, this thing actually comes at pretty much full condition, and you need uh, strength 4 and guns 50. 9.1 times 14, because though it fires, um, well, rather, though each barrel fires 7 pellets, it fires, if we just fire it quickly, there you see it just fired both pellets at once. So it fires actually a total of 14 pellets. Hello, file. Uh, yes, it fires a total of 14 pellets at 9.1 each. So the damage that it um, hands out is about 120 base. 120 base damage is really, really, really bloody high. Like, um, for context, uh, Dinner Bell and the Riot Shotgun, which are generally considered the best shotguns in the game, uh, they have about base damage of, assuming like all the pellets were to connect, about 75 for Dinner Bell and I think 69 for the Riot Shotgun. So this thing is not only the most powerful shotgun in the game, it's that, oh, my hunger level's increased, and that means I'm suddenly losing a bit of strength. Hang on. 
Getting a bit low on food, actually. I may have to go on a little hunting trip at some point. Maybe I'll go and hunt some geckos at the end of this episode just to uh, get my food supplies back up. See, this is not just the most powerful shotgun in the game. It is easily the most powerful shotgun in the game. Like, it's almost crazy how powerful this thing is. The reason people don't talk about it is because, well, it's got two problems. Obviously, every single time you pull the trigger, it then immediately has to reload. Though it's not actually a slow reload, so that's not too bad. The real problem is the spread on it, which is if you want all 14 pellets to connect, you have to be at point blank range. Now, at that point, if you can pull that off, that will basically one shot pretty much any wild creature in New Vegas. Because New Vegas, the creatures generally like, there's not that many tanky enemies, especially next to Fallout 4. Tankiness was not really a characteristic of New Vegas. Like, plenty of creatures hit hard, but for the vast majority of the time, though they hit hard, they actually went down pretty quick too. Everyone's a bit of a glass cannon in this game, and that's the way I like it. But if there's more than one enemy, and thus you take out one but the others are swarming you, you're reloading, it generally just doesn't work well. Plus, shotguns in Fallout just don't work very well in VATS, because, like, very often, even if you're really, really close, the pellets just don't connect. It's rather odd. So, like, shotguns should really be used outside of VATS rather than in. But, you know, regardless, I think I'm going to try and give this thing a bit of a go today. And that, of course, is just with the basic ammo. The really fun thing about shotguns in this game is, like, um, though, like, say, uh, 9mm or 10mm ammo, generally any ammo you picked, like, had uh, consequences to it. Like, it was a trade-off. Like, you know, you could pierce armor, but the base damage was lower. Or you could increase the amount of damage, but the enemy damage threshold would effectively be multiplied, so they'd be tougher. Though, you know, admittedly, hollow point ammo against creatures was just magic free extra damage, but, you know, never mind. Um, shotgun ammo works more like energy cell ammo, which is you're allowed to just have extra damage if you're willing to sacrifice gun condition. So right now with its basic ammo, this thing is doing, uh, what was it? 9.1 times 14. Let's change that over to a different ammo, because I've just been and bought some of the buckshot, which I've actually got plenty of, though it's pretty expensive and heavy mind. 15.8 times 8. And of course it's firing both barrels at once, so that's actually 15.8 times 16. So the DPS on this thing, if it connects, is quite frankly, it's insanely high. This thing is a really, really good answer to large wild creatures that are charging you. And as I'm heading up towards Repcon, well, this strikes me as a very, very good weapon, as feral ghouls have literally no flipping damage resistance. So hello, my good man. There you go. That is how you stop a ghoul in his trap. Perfect. Yep, you just gotta hold your nerve and just blast him in the face. Beautiful. And may I just say how much I love Come Fly With Me as a quest. Like, because it sums up so much of what's right with New Vegas, which is... Actually, before we head up this way, I just want to kind of remind people of some stuff. So imagine walking into a town in a video game, pretty much any video game, in fact, and you run into someone in the town who says, yeah, I know where you need to go next, and I'll tell you if you go to this dungeon nearby and clear out these monsters. Well, in pretty much any video game in the world, what you then need to do is go and clear out the dungeon. But not in New Vegas. No, 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 no. Not in New Vegas. In New Vegas, if you figure out who the quest giver is and where he lives, so it's, uh, it's Manny Vargas, and then you just figure out where his room is, and then you go over to his computer and you just read his terminal, then the terminal has a message on it saying where they're going next. So in other words, you can completely bypass this area. Not that you needed to even do that. If you just happen to stumble across where the cards are, the game's totally happy to just have you skip forward to that and it won't ask questions. Fallout New Vegas was totally cool with you sequence breaking. Fallout 4 wasn't so much like, say, if you try and skip forward to Fort Hagen, in Fallout 4, then there's just a big kind of wooden door that's impassable that's been put in the way, so you're not actually allowed to um, jump forward straight to Kellogg in Fallout 4, even if you actually do happen to stumble across Fort Hagen early. Fallout 4 is kind of interesting for that, because like, even Fallout 3 didn't really mind you sequence breaking. Like, um, interesting thing is, like, there's nothing to stop you turning right as you leave Vault 101 and heading straight to your dad and doing Tranquility Lane. If you happen to know where it is and you can get there at level 1, well, technically level 2, because I don't think there's any way to actually avoid gaining enough experience to avoid levelling up, because I think just for leaving uh, Vault 101, you get enough XP to level up to level 2. Maybe I'm wrong, I'm not 100% sure there. But yeah, if you could find your way to Tranquility Lane, you go and do it at level 1 or 2 or whatever, and, like, the very first time I played Fallout 3, I stumbled across, like, Dad's notes in the Jefferson's Memorial before I actually found 3Dog, so I just happened to sequence break accidentally, and the game was 100% cool with me just skipping forward to that point. 
A Fallout 4 is a lot more fussy with that sort of thing. It's hugely fussy about that sort of thing, in fact. So, you know, you can't skip forward to the Institute unless you've done the Molecular Relay build thing, and you can't find Kellogg until you've actually begun the quest to go and find Kellogg. There's a lot of kind of resistance to sequence breaking in Fallout 4, which I'm not really 100% keen on. I wish, like, it was more like Fallout 3, because even Fallout 3 was very open to you doing that sort of thing. Anyway, back up towards Repcon, and I think today we're going to try and do this as much with shotguns as possible. Because shotguns are fun, and I agree, sometimes maybe I overuse rifles in New Vegas. I mean, I overuse rifles, because rifles are the way of doing the most damage in this game by a long, long way. But shotguns are fun, and ghouls have no damage resistance, so let's use shotguns on this occasion as far as we can. Though very quickly, we're going to run into the reason why people don't use this weapon, even though it's amazing, which is, yes, being crowded by ghouls. If you get yourself a bit crowded then this weapon rapidly loses its charm. So there's a... Ooh, there's a Nightkin up there. Oh, I didn't realise you actually died up there. I thought you actually got... Uh, you had already kind of... You spawned in dead up there. That's nice. Where are the ghouls? Hello, ghouls. I know there's ghouls here. There's got to be ghouls around here. Unless that Nightkin just killed them. That's interesting. Uh, yeah, the ghouls appear to be going to try and hunt the... Uh, Hunt the Nightkin on this occasion. I swear there should be ghouls. I'd say possibly their ghoul just finished off that Nightkin. That's a shame. But ferals will just go down like paper against this thing. Ah, here we go. Ah, but we've also got the problem here, which is there's multiple ghouls over there. Uh, multiple ghouls are bad, of course. Multiple ghouls mean trouble. Hello, come on, you. There you go. Oh, dear. There's quite a few ghouls over there, actually. And there's, there's one dead. Oh, dear. Quite a few of them, actually. And then just keep moving. Keep moving. And just do that. Obviously, this is the new animation you're kind of seeing here. Go for the legs. Go for the legs. Go for the legs. Right, you're... Oh, you just died. That's defense will have given me some defense against that Roma. And then the next Roma to go down. You're almost dead already. That's fine. Yeah, this is where... What do you mean zero? How can that be zero percent chance to hit game? I, re I reject this notion. And then critical strike, and you're already going to be dead, in fact. And back off, you're going to be dead. And I think, oh, you're already crippled. I'm sorry there. This is a bit of the weapon animation I wasn't really expecting, which is if you actually fire, you go directly into a uh, firing position, like if you're holding the gun uh, straight ahead of you. That's nice. That's another part of the weapon animation mod. I didn't realize that was going to be there, and that's kind of cool. Oh, yeah, multiple Nightkins just hanging around here. I suspect this may be a change that uh, Jay Sawyer made, given enemy placement is part of this mod, because this feels like with uh, the Ash Pile that's very familiar there, another Nightkin here, and another one that was alive up top, I suspect, yeah, Jay Sawyer actually decided to engineer a fight between ghouls and Nightkin here as you approach, which is kind of cool. I like that. And don't forget the checkers board covered with bottle caps. If you want to get these easily, just grab the actual board. And then you can just empty the bottle caps off so you can get the caps without accidentally picking up the uh, picking up the chessboard. Just grabbed a quick night's sleep on the mattress out here and moved straight on down towards Repcon itself. And so we've still got a healthy number of ghouls around here, which is fine because what I'll do, in fact, is I will snipe out not the ghouls, but the car they're all standing next to couple of bullets in there. Nice. That'll do a good job. Back over to the big boomer. Come on over. There you go. Dead. And as long as they're coming in a nice long line, this here works absolutely fine. Dead two. Now, the thing to remember about this area is you want some spare carry capacity for the loot. Before you leave this place, if you've got any interest in, you know, money, make sure you have basically cleared out every single ghoul here. You do not want to miss a single one, because every weapon can be worth thousands in this place. And I've got a plan for that there, money. Right, two enemies up here, so lever action shotgun, I'd say. Lever action should work just fine. And one nice shot in the head for you, my good ghoulie friend. 
By the way, a lot of people miss this. There's actually a way to sneak round all of the ghouls at the front door here if you've decided you just don't want to fight them. Like, uh, as you'd almost expect from New Vegas, there is actually a sneaky back road. But I never really see anyone taking it, so I'm just going to quickly kind of show it off here, which is, um, at this point on the road, before you actually get into sniping these guys, because those ghouls down there will never have seen you by this point, um, turn right and head up this slope. And you can actually work your way round to uh, the right side of the Repcon facility. So simply head towards like the broken pylon over there. You'll know you're going in the right direction. So you can just loop around the side here. None of the ghouls will see you. None of the ghouls at the front door. None of the ghouls in the front. You're miles too far away to actually be seen. You'll get down here and you'll reach a slope down and yeah, a collapsed pylon. So you'll know you're in the right place. Now that gives you a little way that you can get down into the side of the building. Don't go that way. Instead, turn right and loop round the back of the fence here. Because the ghouls are, there's some ghouls at the front door and some ghouls around the front. But uh, these ones here, there's no one back in this area. So instead, just tack along the back of the building here. And when you reach the end here, you will see there is in fact a massive hole in the fence. Absolutely perfect. And the hole in the fence leads to a back door. So you can actually skip all of the ghouls at the front if you want to. Like, it's very difficult to skip absolutely all of the ghouls. Um, there's quite a few of them actually in the facility. Though, you can just run straight past them, like, if you want to. But yeah, that's actually a way of kind of skipping around to all the ghouls that... There's just a hole in the universe there, marvellous. Uh, yeah, that's just a way of kind of skipping around uh, the ghouls at the front if you happen to want to do that. Now, before I go inside, uh, because I was talking about the value of the uh, all the guns that the dead ghouls are holding, before I go any further, what I would like to do is very quickly uh, nip back home and do some inventory management so I've got enough space to actually carry all this stuff out again. Okay, with 50 spare capacity, including me having got rid of my hunting rifle, so I cannot be tempted to snipe even if I were to want to, then uh, yes, now I think we are ready to go inside and clear this place out. We'll start off with the, yeah, the lever action. Lever action, because that's at least got five rounds in a clip, so in case it gets swarmed, not a bad thing. And there we are, Come Fly With Me starts now. If you find the note on Manny's terminal, then interestingly you can't actually speak to him about the ghouls. Or rather he'll mention the ghouls, but you can't ask after them, and you can't do the deal with him. You just don't care. But once you get into the building, Come Fly With Me begins anyway because of the intercom message. So, first dead ghoul, laser RCW, wait for, value a thousand. <laughs> Beautiful. And then we've just got to take care of the ghouls that are going to be in here. Hello. Let's let them come to us nice and quick. Yeah, you see, Lever actually just doesn't quite have the hitting power it needs. So we're going over to Big Boomer. I think there's also... Are there not? I thought there were. Okay. What I do is... And remember, don't actually use VATs. Using VATs with shotguns, terrible idea. This guy might also have... No, he has a... Oh, no, no, no. I always forget this. He doesn't have a stealth boy in his inventory. But if we check the floor around him... Ow! Screw you! Right, let's start off by clearing the ground floor. Um, the upper level is kind of separate because, like, through that door over there, it's nothing but leading up. And this door here just leads up as well. So, anyway, to get around to the ground floor is through that door over to the left. I'll check the other bathroom in case there's a... I swear there's a... Yeah, first aid case. Perfect. There we go. Seagull, shoot ghoul, ghoul go down. But at that range, that was a bit of a risk. Some of the pellets could have hit. Though, I guess that was a basic feral, not a roma. So it's like not as high risk, really. But yeah, we definitely want to be going through this whole facility. Because come on. Oh, Plasma Defender. Oh, terrible condition Plasma Defender. Boo. There you go. Oh, what the bloody hell was that? <laughs> Extremely rapid reload and a VAT shot. They're very, very interesting. Okay, what do we need to do on this occasion? Actually, I know what we need to do. Some additional science would not hurt at this point. Science up to 50. Will be very, very recommended. Ah, let's get up to 55, why not? And then just a couple of extra points in basic guns. As I'm in more mazy air at the moment, I've gone over to Lucky. Though actually, this would be better, to be honest. I'll go over to that gun. Laser RCW, good. That's the level of gun I want to be seeing. I'm hoping that these guys don't have plasma rifles. They can spawn plasma rifles. I don't want them to. Plasma rifles are valuable, but plasma rifles are also heavy. So I'd rather they didn't, if at all possible. Make your way up to the top floor while you're here, by the way. Don't just go, like, where you're supposed to go directly. There's a couple of, like, collapsed floors that will let you get up to where you want to be. Hello over there. You're in Roma, aren't you? Oh, I've already crippled your legs. 
That's bloody convenient. Always go for the legs with the ghouls. A crippled ghoul. Actually, same as death claws, actually. And then you go down nice and quick. Yeah, you want crippled ghouls and you want crippled death claws. You always want to be going for the legs. Like, in this game, as a general rule, go for the legs, like, all the time. It's just a good idea. That lets you get up to the CEO's office. Average lock safe in here. Which contains, most importantly, two stealth boys. The joke of this area, by the way, is, like, some stealth boys were sent here by accident. And they were used for inappropriate workplace purposes. No one specifies exactly what they are, but I think unfortunately we should conclude there were some uh, slight sexual pranks going on in the, the rep contest site. And obviously there's an angry email going around saying you must never use these, they must all be given back. I can't believe you did this, but of course in the CEO safe, he kept two for his own purposes. It's a very fun bit of storytelling through inventory, and I do like it when the game does that. If you're ever in trouble navigating this place, by the way, um, this particular area with this kind of weird, mysterious, orange, glowy light, though admittedly I'm not 100% sure exactly what's... I mean, is it supposed to be this that's casting that light? It doesn't kind of look like it should, but alright. If you ever find this area, you're in the centre on the first floor, which means the staircase directly ahead of you leads back down to the entranceway, and then you've got this area to the left and right of the entranceway on the first floor either side of you, which is convenient because there's several guys with uh, guns over here. So dead ghouls, recharger, not so bad. Again, you can see very, very valuable indeed. You're up here on the first floor. This is where there's a load of them. Another plasma defender. Ah, another poor condition one, sadly. That is a shame. And this guy who's just already dead. I think I killed that guy. He's just dead on his own. I believe there's, yep, another one right here. There's like three in a row. Okay-ish condition plasma defender there. Nothing special. I think there's, yep, looks like a fourth one over here. Yeah, there's just loads of them. Yep, laser RCW. Ah, uh, again, not perfect condition. I was hoping for better condition than this stuff. Well, I think I've got all of the corpses that dotted around this area, at least, though there are a couple more later as well. So in that case, may as well push forward into the main quest stuff. And if there's one, no, there's a blood splatter down here towards the basement, but not actually anything else. And I still have a good 20 carry capacity free yet for yet more energy weapons. This is all going pretty much according to plan. Like, this quest gives you a ton of experience, but the more important bit, and the bit I don't really see people talking about... By the way, I love the texture on the stairs now. That's beautiful. Uh, the bit I don't really see people talking about is indeed uh, the amount of money that you get. Oh, here's another one. Recharger. Perfect. The amount of money that you can get from all this stuff. You can get a ridiculous amount of money from doing this quest in the loot. And yes, I think you all know how this one goes. I need to go and speak to Jason Bright and to help the ghouls with their great journey. He'll send me down into the basement and I'm going to loot around here first. The sad thing about these guys, by the way, is as you can kind of see by looking at them, the weapons they have on them are often nowhere near as good. So if you, if you kill these guys, you often get nothing but like, uh, you can see this guy's just got a laser pistol on him. So it's not really worth killing these guys just for their weapons, because yeah, the weapons they're holding, nowhere near as good as the dead bright followers. So the first bit of the quest is very, very easy. There's Nightkin in the basement who are permanently cloaked until they're actually aggroed, in which case they'll go between being cloaked and not. And you just have to go and take care of them, either by killing them or persuading them to leave. Nikin are bloody tough to kill, so I'm going the persuade option. Now, the timings aren't too difficult to get right here. All you need to do is move at the point at which uh, the one of them passes in front of the door, because that's when you've got an opening to go down to the left and meet up with their leader, where you can effectively form a truce with him. So, just got to watch for the wibble of a Nightkin passing by that door there. And there the Nightkin went. Now we can start moving afterwards. Keep an eye on the position of that Nightkin. Nightkin goes in there. Gun away. Gun away, gun away, gun away, gun away, gun away. And past the outside. And down we go to their leader. Perfect. We now should be 100% safe. They're really not perceptive. What's that, Adler? We have a visitor. Hello, Davison. Like. Right, a, a piece of paper, shipment invoice, hundreds of stealth boys sent here a, a long time ago. Antler says we leave here as soon as we get stealth boys. Let me give you key. Antler had me lock the door. The ghoul inside, not expecting a human. Maybe he don't shoot you. Maybe he will. There we are, Davison's key. Uh, by the way, um, this is a really fun little touch, by the way. Davison, of course, um, he thinks Antler, the skull, speaks to him. If you touch Antler in any way, and of course, because you can't interact with him, the only way to touch him is to, like, use the grabby, shaky thing. If you interact with Antler in any way, Davison goes immediately hostile, which I quite like. So I'm just going to drop a save and show that, because it's quite funny. 
I also want to test, by the way, if you just, like, knock Antler with something else, whether that counts, or you have to touch Antler yourself. So if I just knock him with a book... Antler, he yells, and now he's attacking. Beautiful. You touch Antler, now you die! Basically, don't touch Antler. He really doesn't like you touching Antler, so just don't touch Antler, all right? Instead, now we've got the uh, the key that he gave us. We just head down here to the right, passing by the uh, the beautiful Nightkin corpses. Interestingly, um, the guy through here has like the implication is he's shot down multiple Nightkin. Nightkin are tougher than being taken out with a hunting rifle, whatever. This guy must be a real badass. So oddly, like, there is one obvious solution to this problem that he's just not happy with, which is, like, you could just say to him, look, these guys want the stealth boys. If I just come in and grab the stealth boys or investigate this room, then they'll probably leave. I can work out a deal and you'll be free to go. But no, the only way he'll leave peacefully is if you go and find um, his girlfriend, who's dead elsewhere in the prison, behind many, many nightkin. So we're not doing that. Can I just... No, he's very perceptive, unfortunately. But he won't be able to stand up to much. Oh yeah, good, he's into hidden now. That's fine, that should kill him in one hit then. Bye. Sorry. Feel bad. I don't feel that bad. I've always considered him the acceptable casualty of this mission. Like, you know, going to get his girlfriend basically involves either multiple fights against Nightkin or burning at least two stealth boys. I don't really see that as worth it. So as a result of that, yeah, typically I will just happily kill him. Now, do I actually have the skill to disarm the traps he's got lying around? There's multiple traps in this room, so we've got concealed mine. No, explosives 28 for those. Okay, be careful of the concealed mines, because they're a little bit tricky to see. I can disarm these, but for like 2 XP each, it's not really worth it. Instead, with the basics at least of the bear traps taken care of, you can go upstairs. Once you're upstairs, there's no more traps, so you're 100% safe. He's got a hunting rifle on him. Ah, uh, reasonably valuable. I think I'll take that and potentially sell it down the line. Because if we're almost out of bright followers to kill, then I might well be able to just take that and sell it too. I feel like I've not got quite enough money to do what I actually wanted to do here. But we'll see. We will see. Anyway, the answer to this whole quest is over on this terminal back here. A note saying that the shipment was in fact sent back, sending back two, two crates of devices labelled Stealth Boys. But as a result of employee misbehaviour, not mine, one crate was opened and is missing five Stealth Boys. Sorry about that. And by the way, that number five actually perfectly stacks up with the number of Stealth Boys that are dotted around. I'm um, excluding the Stealth Boys you get off the Nightkin, because up in the CEO's office, there are two Stealth Boys that he pilfered for his own usage. In the safe on the first floor, there's another two. And then there is a note sent around angrily by HR saying, I can't believe someone would misuse a stealth boy. So one person misused a stealth boy. And then basically, yes, there was a horror and outrage from HR. And then immediately after that, the CEO squirreled away too, as did somebody else. So, and then of course, uh, whoever wrote that note tried to blame it on employee misbehavior when employee misbehavior only used one out of the five. But yeah, the numbers actually stack up properly, which is really, really cool. Cool. Anyway, let's go tell Davison about our findings. And off Davison goes. And interestingly, of course, the moment he goes, Antler disappears as well. Like, there's no actual animation for him picking up uh, Antler or anything, but we can reasonably assume that he did indeed take Antler with him. It's nice that he doesn't just leave Antler here. Antler does actually go too, which a lot of people miss because, like, there's no animation for him doing that. He just, like, walks off the moment he said it. But Antler, who was sitting on top of this little coffee maker, has indeed gone as well. Don't forget to search through the area where the knights can were, by the way. They have left around a few more stealth boys, one on the table at the back there. I did just want to go and check, by the way, after the uh, the knight can have actually left. Uh, his girlfriend down here, there's not much point coming to see her, even after they've gone, because she does not carry a weapon, unlike the rest of them. That all done, report in to Jason Bright, and we move on to the next stage of the quest. Follow Jason Bright and all of his followers kind of, well, they just sort of actually mysteriously um, suddenly gain spacesuits. Like, they run out of the door while wearing uh, the bright robes. And the moment they're through here in this hallway, they just sort of, like, they're wearing spacesuits. It just sort of happens. Now, if you're really, really, really looking to maximise money, this is the point where you turn on Jason Bright. Because spacesuits are really, really valuable. So if you murder his followers for their spacesuits at this point, you could actually make a fair bit more money than people normally make off this quest. But yeah, 
lucrative bloody quest, but I'm not going to do that because I'm nice. Now, as for Chris down here, the fact that he's human and not a ghoul, if you are female and have Black Widow, you can convince him of that fact very, very easily. If you're male, you need to do a speech check of 50. I think it's nice for him to know the truth, to be honest. So uh, I'm going to tell him the truth and then convince him to help out the journey anyway. So there you are, speech 50. Jason told me himself, the great journey is for ghouls only, you're not going. Oh, God. You're telling me the truth, aren't you? Oh no. How could they do this to me? For two years? My god, I've been a joke to them. Do you have any idea how easy it'd be for me to sabotage those rockets? That'd be a joke, huh? One hell of a joke. No, 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 no. That'd be murder. And that's wrong. So, you want me to accompany you on your adventures across the wasteland, is that it? No, not in the slightest. You just go and hang out in flipping Novak, it'll be fine. Oddly, if he does do that, he moves in with Manny. Uh, Manny is canonically gay, there is some confirmed bachelor dialogue with him. Um, Chris isn't, because of course you use Black Widow on him, but I don't know, maybe he's bisexual because he does just move in with Manny and there's only one bed in that room. Now, in order to make the rockets happen, two things I need, igniting agent and thrust control modules. And convenient ladder back out here to skip back outside. Even though the quest marker actually says find one, return it to him, and then go and get the other half of the quest, you don't have to. It's very easy, whichever one you pick, to go and actually get both of them at the same time, which is very, very convenient. So, uh, the thrust control modules are indeed in the hands of uh, old lady Gibson, who we already murdered, so that's bloody convenient. Oh, wait a minute, hang on. Are you a br You're a Bright Brotherhood? Come on, Plasma Defender! Oh, pretty decent condition one, nice. Nice. Oh, I'm glad I came back this way now. Oh, is that another one? Please tell me that's not one. No! That's just a bit of rubbish. Boo! Old Lady Gibson's a really shrewd operator, by the way. She charges you an arm and a leg for these thrust control modules because she gets the feeling that uh, you need them and no one else is going to have them. So, uh, fortunately, we've killed her, so we don't need to worry about that. But I think her dogs are just basically planning to eat her at this point. That's why they're all circling around her. Did I already get the key? Yes, I already got the key for... Ooh, Brahmin steak. I'll have one of them too, thank you. So simply, uh, once you've got the key of her body, head into her garage. It's the box over here. It's normally average locked. I cracked it open earlier to check if the big boom was in here. So you can just grab those. But yeah, even without the key, average lock, you can just steal those. That's good. The igniting agent, there's a couple of different options. If you take the quest and just follow the marker, then you'll be pointed out towards Clark Field, where Mr. Rad Ickle, the sort of radiation-themed would-be, not really a superhero, but he's clearly likes, really enjoys being a kind of a rad-themed bloke. So maybe, yeah, maybe a bit of a would-be superhero. Um, has like a whole vat of the stuff. However, um, those rockets which if you speak to Cliff Briscoe and you pay attention, he does say they're full of some glowing stuff. Well, you can just use them. Just go and collect some rockets. Not even that many. Like five, does it? Though first, I will gladly be drinking some water, please. I know I'm accepting a lot of rads while I'm doing this, but I'll gladly accept that for a full top-up of water. There we go. Oh, what the? Hello. What are you doing here? Why is it just a nightkin here? Can't see any more around here. All right, fine. See if I can go into... Who's detecting me? What? Who's detecting me and why? No, Bark. I'm trying to flipping wipe out this guy, if you'd be so kind. See if I can just finish him off. Oh, yeah. That works. Oh, no. You come back here, you. You're not getting away. You're not getting the flip away. Maybe you've got a stealth boy on you. Oh. It's the same guy. Oh, I've heard of this before. Um, That he does just regenerate. If you want an infinite source of miniguns for repairing your minigun, uh, this is where you can get it from, as well as an infinite source of uh, 5mm. Yeah, even when the quest is done, he just regenerates and he'll just kind of come back occasionally. I have heard that before, though I've never seen it myself in the past. Alright, yeah, that's just the, uh, the screams of the Brahmin bloke. Back again. What I didn't remember, however, is, yeah, with Science Force, you can actually ask him about the radioactive material in the rocket souvenirs. I, uh, well, I don't really know. Would that sour you on buying one if it did? No, 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 I would like to buy- No, don't buy all of the remaining rocket souvenirs. What happens if you ask that? I've never asked this before. Really? I mean, the day I'd part with them for such an incredibly low price, with so many other offers flooding in. But I like you. I think maybe it's time. All that's left is in the storage room here. You can buy the key from my store. 
111, or rather, it's value 75. No, no, no. I don't think that's really worth it, to be honest. You can, however, buy a thousand Dinky the T-Rexes if you'd like. That's good as well. You know what? Maybe I'll just kind of go in behind you here, open this door as it's already open. I'm trapped behind the door. Maybe I'll do it this way instead. And then maybe I'll just close the door behind me. And maybe I'll just steal as many as I need. And then... Oh, I've actually taken some radiation poisoning at last. They've literally got zero weight. Oh, well, I may as well just take absolutely all of them in that case. Anything in this crate here? More rocket souvenirs. I tell you what, if they weigh nothing, I'll have the lot of them. Because they actually do have value, so I could sell these down the line. I wonder if I get all of them, will the radiation actually stop? Nope, there is just... Oh, wait, no, no, I've missed a few yet. Hang on, let's get the rest of them. I picked up a dinosaur too. And no, there is just intrinsic radiation in this room. Even if you pick up every single rocket, sadly, yeah, there's just radiation as well. So, with thrust control modules and basically several hundred apparently completely weightless rocket toys, back down we go. And don't forget on your way past, there is one other really good thing here, which is a spacesuit helmet, totally weightless, and a spacesuit. Again, a value of uh, 729, so yeah, a weight to value ratio of 100, very, very favourable. I wonder what it does, I wonder if they've changed it all, because it used to actually be pretty damn good. Uh, damage threshold 10, any damage resistance? No, just as is. So, not as good as my combat armor, unfortunately. And they've removed five! Yes, it was indeed five, I remember correctly. Meaning I've still got about 295 in my inventory I can just sell later. Yes, I'll tell Jason that the great journey can begin. Now, interestingly, this is normally the point where Jason reveals Chris is a human and then Chris is horrified. But is Chris going to react differently because he already knows because I told him? To the promised land we go. To the far beyond. There you go, and Chris immediately runs off to Novak, his job completed, to move in with Manny Vargas. Now, as for the question of exactly where the Great Beyond is, Jason Bright is very vague on the topic. He basically says only one thing about it that's in any way descriptive that I'll now cut to. It is a place of light and healing, and I know in my soul that my flock will be safe there. Another interesting thing that we do know is uh, in the end cards, a lot of people like, well, a lot of people know this, but they don't really kind of think about it when they're thinking about the Great Beyond. We know that um, basically during the Second Battle of Hoover Dam, a small legion uh, little detachment attacks Novak and does a bit of damage, though they are repulsed, unless, of course, you're, you know, fighting for the legion ending, in which case I believe they just take over everything. Uh, but yeah, anything other than a legion ending, they're repulsed, but they do a lot of damage to the town. And Jason Bright and his followers come back to assist. They don't go too far. They don't go to, like, space or the moon or anything. I'd like to think they go to the Glowing Sea, a place of light and healing. I'd say the Glowing Sea and potentially the crater we find there in Fallout 4 might just actually be, uh, yeah, a perfect description of where they might have gone. So I don't think they went and visited there, but came back to help out their friends later. But I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. Maybe they went somewhere close. Maybe they just went into the Divide or something, given there's lots of rads floating around there. I will say if there's one problem with Come Fly With Me, it's a quest that involves a lot of running through the facility. You have to go, yeah, up and down into the basement a couple of different times, and uh, that's not the most fun thing in the world. It would have been nice if they'd come up with, like, you know, an express elevator. A Skyrim elevator, if you will, to let you skip between uh, the bits of the level once you're actually done. It's a rare bit of relatively poor level design for Fallout New Vegas, which is normally beautifully designed. But on this particular occasion, yeah, there's a bit too much just running through empty areas you've already cleared out. So out we go onto the test site. Lovely day for it. Nice weather. And over we go over here. Now, navigation controls. Do I want to set the rockets to crash into each other? No, no, I do not. I could examine the navigation data further. And I believe, yes, good, I can because my science is good enough. I think it was 50. I thought it might be 60, but apparently it's 50. So yes, I would indeed like to make the change to take them to their destination faster. Though admittedly, I don't know why I can't find out what the destination is. Clearly my character does know, but we, the players, we never find out. Make the change. There we are. That's a rare bit of good karma. Now that murdering ghouls and powder gangers isn't good karma anymore. Yeah, I'm I'm pretty evil at the moment, actually. If I just go over to my general. Yeah, I'm evil. I'm a Vegas crime lord, according to the game. So, uh, that's unfortunate. Anyway, that job's done. Activate the launch button. And turn on Ride of the Valkyries. And off the rockets go. Magnificent. 
Bit of a dodgy start, but all done. And yeah, we're not supposed to assume they just crashed into each other down the road. We do know they genuinely actually did make it somewhere and then later came back. I'm not sure how they came back. That must have mean they like constructed a launch site the other end in order to relaunch back. And I don't know exactly how those things landed. They just like rockets. There's no like landing gear or anything. But all right, fine. You know what? It happened somehow. And 800 experience points for doing that. Very healthy little XP dump there. Come fly with me. Completed. So with all that equipment there, we have quite a big pile of money, and I do indeed have a plan for that nice big pile of money. I've got my eye on something in particular. I'm going to quickly go and see if maybe I can afford it. Ah, but on the way to do that, Chris is here. Hello, Chris. You got anything new to say? Welcome to Novak. It's not very exciting here, but the people are friendly enough. My engineering skills have been coming in handy too. I've got plenty to do. Thanks for telling me about this place. That's nice. He gets a bit of a happy ending. At least he seems satisfied enough here. And there he goes into Manny's room. Now I'm also curious if I can tell Manny about this and get any more um, fame for Novak, even though he never gave me the quest in the first place. Nope, I cannot tell him about that. This is the disadvantage of getting the information about Boulder City from the terminal rather than from him, which is because he never gave me the quest, he doesn't have to give me a reward, so I've given up the fame and money that he would have given me because I looked at the terminal first. So, yeah, potentially if you want to maximise fame and reward, then you probably actually don't want to do it the way I just did it. See, the other advantage of doing Come Fly With Me is because now I am liked in Novak, Novak shops sell to me at much more favourable rates, which is excellent. So I've just noticed here the prices are already well down. Let's get them a bit more down, though. Just a quick copy of Salesman Weekly for a further 10 barter. And this here's what I've been looking for. Lucky Battle Armor. So damage threshold of 18, damage resistance of 12. Weighs only 12, pretty damn light. Medium armor, action points plus 5. Luck plus 1, guns plus 10. So I'd like that lucky battle armor, please. Luck plus 1 is exactly what I want to be getting out of my armor. Plus, I'd like to just not be wearing, like, the black combat armor you get from Durable Dungeons and Sack because I do that every time I play New Vegas. I want to use some of this cool new stuff. So that's going to take 9,000 caps. I will give you my own combat armor back, all right? There we go, down to 7,000. I will give you, yeah, that's, he's giving me pretty good value because I'm like to Novak. I'll sell you the spacesuit and the helmet. And now time to start selling all these guns I've been picking up. Uh, the laser RCWs times three. Two of them very, very valuable, in fact. Plasma Defenders times... I just don't get Plasma Defenders. They're just not even that much better than Plasma Pistols with mods. So we'll gladly sell those as well. Recharge your pistols. Yep, most definitely. And tragically, he won't buy back several hundred rocket souvenirs, given I did just steal them from him. Never mind. So with that, I can buy that and still have a very healthy amount of money. 2,500 for a lucky battle armor I will gladly take. And here we are in our beautiful new traditional green combat armor. Out of black into the green. Is there anything new about this, by the way? Looks like fairly traditional combat armor just with, like, um, the reskin on it to me. Nothing special marking it out. I was kind of hoping they'd reuse the asset from Fallout 3. Um, the, uh, the Riley's Ranger armor with, the, like, the extra stars on it, I think. But, uh, doesn't look like it. Looks like traditional combat armor there. But this stuff... This stuff is bloody tough. Nolly says that actually pushes my luck up to six, which is very, very welcome indeed. I'm very happy for my luck to be at six. Combined with all these other things that are giving me bonus critical chances. Yeah, very, very happy with this. All right, ladies and gentlemen, as the sun sets over Novak, which now seems to like us very much because of the positive changes we have made, getting rid of their ghoul problem, and indeed sending the ghouls off to the far beyond where they wanted to go. And they'll be back to help out too. The town and the ghouls are apparently now friends with some powerful new armor on my back and a powerful new shotgun in my hands, which I did kind of take off the corpse of a little old lady. So let's not focus on that bit. I think I'm going to call this a part here. There's some other fun little stuff in this area I would like to uh, show off next. So now Next time we will be heading a little bit further north. I think you can see Helios 1 there. I'd say we go and have a look at that. And there's also a few other little bits and pieces that by this point will have come unlocked earlier in the game. So we'll nip back and have a little look-see at that as well. So, some more fun stuff to come, ladies and gentlemen. But in the meantime, I've been John. This has been many a true nerd. And this has been Fallout New Vegas in survival mode. Thanks to the JSOA mod. Thank you very much and goodbye.
Just got to weaken the base of this a little bit more. Yes. Yes! Good news, I'm protecting you! Alex Mason, the man who can literally run as fast as a speeding truck. This game is basically just badasses don't look at explosions the game, isn't it? Oh, ho, 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 ho.